bringing you inside the USL Championship and League One. Segbert's got there for Kalak! He's been knocking on the door! He knocks it down! Diving into all the biggest stories and top headlines. You are ripping and roaring today. This is USL All Access. It's almost impossible to recreate that level of magic. With Mike Watts and Devin Kerr on Sirius XM FC. Welcome to a hot and fresh edition of USL All Access. A very happy Tuesday, wherever we may find you this week, with Devin Kerr, Nemeth McConnell at the controls, Mike Watts. Devin and I have turned this into a, a fashion thing. Again, we are dressed exactly the same. The, the folks at USL reached out and said, enough of the jerseys, start looking more like Rob Lowe, and wear for the <laughs> brand, and here we are. Charlie bringing the hardcore quarter zips. We've got a ton to cover this week. Uh, the battery absolutely unleashed uh, on New Mexico. Phoenix is off the schneid. Goal and win. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, they they run rampant. I, you know, I read that wrong first time around off our, off our little rundown against El Paso. Uh, there may well be a new Super League and championship market, question mark, to mention. Um, we've also got a ton of action from the week that was to, to chat about. Uh, Dev, uh, congrats on wearing this nice, proper, uh, dry fit technology that, that Charlie brought to the table. It's delightful. Nice and uh-huh. nice and comfortable. Washed it last night, wore it this morning. Special thanks to all of the friends and family, truly mean it, at USL HQ. Special thanks to what has to be part of the family lineage somewhere, Tanya Kerr. Relation only by name at this point in time, but... Greatness recognizes greatness, and we know exactly what's going on there. Tanya, thank you as always. Love it. Love it. I almost busted out the hat, by the way. I did not, though. I no, I'm, I'll I set that out for the moment. All right, yeah. Dev. Uh, what did let, you think get... it said, by the way, instead of runs rampant? <laughs> well, there was a word before it that, you know, you change one letter, and all of a sudden it becomes just a, a total problem. Understood. Got I it. think I think you can get away with it. Uh on this medium but i don't know that i want to try it you know what i'm saying i'll push i'll push the envelope in a lot of scenarios i don't think this is one of them (laughs) no uh also if if you're a really good boy uh devin and i will will tell you where the best cornbread in louisville is i was joking about this on air this week it ended up getting to dev he wasn't even calling the game but someone just assumed because we were talking about great cornbread (laughs) that led directly to a goal that (laughs) Clearly, only we would do that. And they're not entirely wrong because Ricky Lopez Espen looked like a deer in the headlights. Poor kid. I had no <laughs> idea what was coming. He had no, I went and listened to it. And I was like, you, bro, just get out of the way. That choo choo train's coming through and you're on the tracks, buddy. <laughs> he was baffled. That might be in our mailbag segment. All right, Dev, before we get going, you know, it, the news broke yesterday and it, it's worthy of some discussion here. Roswell, Roswell, Georgia. Is that the next market to join the championship in the Super League? Now, all we're reading is literally what you're reading publicly. There's really been no time for us to go try and sniff out what's going on here. Other than to say that the public commentary is uh, that there is a group exploring developing, building a women's soccer stadium in addition uh, to a, a entertainment district. We see a lot of this, right? It's It's part of a grander real estate play. I also think this is kind of interesting. There are people going, why would you put a championship team? Because that is also part of this uh, rumor, or however you want to describe it, reporting um, in Atlanta. May I just suggest that with the U.S. Soccer Training Center going there, you're going to need a bigger boat. That is a major metropolis, and there's only so many guys that can go through the proving ground at one time. And if you want pro minutes and also being in the U.S. soccer universe, that might actually be a really logical place to do it. And then That's from a Super League perspective, this is like, this is a no-brainer. You know, it's funny as I was thinking about it, too, and, and you and I briefly discussed this before coming on air. I was like, you know, it's aggressive going to Atlanta. I agree with everything that you said because of the hotbed of talent. First and foremost, right? I mean, they are they are loaded from top to bottom um, in the youth ranks. And if, if you bring the entire tiered structure 
of U.S. soccer into play. There is only so many players and so much resources that can go into an MLS squad. That's not knocking on a USL championship team. It's no different than any other market, a North Carolina FC trying to hold on to players against, and they've got an incredible academy, by the way, against a Charlotte team and MLS, right? Um, and that's just one example. That's spread out all over the country. I think the talent is there for sure. Roswell's far enough removed. While I can understand people going, oh, well, it's near Atlanta. Yeah, it's not like it's downtown where this is going to be. It's a very different region. You're on the outskirts. The closest thing to it is actually going to be the training facility of Atlanta United, which is, it's beautiful out there. Not just the training facility, but, you know, the Alpharetta, Roswell type region. I didn't even think about the U.S. soccer facility until you said something. And that makes even more sense because to your point, like the, the, the structure is very different than when I came up. The way that it worked back in the day, Mike, was you had ODP. It was called the Olympic Development Program. And that was your state, at least in Florida, this is how it worked. My state was broken into four regional locations. So A, B, C, and D. You tried out for that. Then you went to state. Once you made state, then you went to region. There are five regions in the United States. Once you made region, then you went to national pool, and then you became a national team player. Now they have ID centers where 100 kids at a time are getting called in to these ID camps. Then they take them and work them into national team pools and things of that nature. And you can now they, the pool used to only exist at the highest level. Now there are pool players four region players, four state players, almost like alternates or just a bigger group. Having that all in one area on a regular basis is nauseating to think about the amount of talent that's going to be there. That's incredible. And so I agree with you. I think it's a great thought, and it's probably the only time in the history of our relationship that you've thought of something before me. Excellent. Um, I, let's also say this. There are how many professional clubs – and only so many people in in the kingdom united um it's a big country like how many people get lost in the shuffle a, a kid in richmond you and i had the kickers in open cup saw the bright lights of atlanta and they got sucked into you know look at the facility and ultimately there's only so many slots and if you're not going to be a top 5 guy in the academy in your age group you're not getting a homegrown deal. Now, you could get to the point where maybe you get there, but you aren't tabbed for it at 17. You'll have to go the distance. And if you go into a USL environment, you may be getting pro minutes at 17, not yep. waiting with the 17s at, at the academy level. Yeah, Not to say there's a right or a wrong way. Every kid's different. But you go put a team in Roswell – it doesn't mean that it's going to be a direct attempt to go influence Atlanta United's fan base. Also, Mike, just to add on something, and you've heard this from me for years, more opportunity, more research, more funds, more investment. I've been saying that for years. I don't care. Like, there should be no monopolies. That's not at MLS. That's not at USL. Competition is healthy. Mm -hmm. it, it helps drive people to uncomfortable places. And this year, I'm referencing specific organizations where you're not the only one in the area, right? And that that goes for everybody involved in this pyramid that we're talking about in the United States soccer. So competition is great, and it's only going to fuel the development of the greater good of all players around the country. That's what we all want anyway, right? Or at least that's what I want. Yeah, well, it'd be nice come 2026 if we see some of these new teams that have sprung out of the ground in the last 10 years make an impact on who eventually makes the World Cup roster. That That's going to be where we ultimately figure out whether or not this entire academy investment really worked out. Uh, Dev, let's chat about some other events of the weekend. Uh, Sacramento got a 1-1 draw against Indy on the road over the weekend, but it was midweek. Uh, Sacramento defeated Miami. Uh, good buddy of ours. Congrats to Mark Briggs. He's the 19th to 50, so he's not like Wilson Harris young, but he's probably younger than most. Still, 19 is pretty impressive, man. It Nine, is. Only 19 coaches all time have reached that mark. Yeah. I think that's pretty incredible. However, 
Still got a little bit of ways to go. So the trivia question for you of the day, Michael, is, although Mark Briggs has reached 50, we wish him 200 more, right? Then he would have the record. The record is currently held with 130 by a single club. Who do you think that is? A, a club or a coach? No, a coach with a single club. Oh. So single it, club. That's, so the, that's the important Bob, thing here. Single it's Mike club. Anheuser. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Charleston. Yeah. Augie, 130. Yep. Gotta love him. I was going to say Bob Lilly because they didn't say with a single club. I, I saw the trivia question. I was mulling this over. Mm -hmm. Too many draws. There's a lot of draws. It's a lot of points, but yeah. it's a lot of draws. It's a lot of draws. And we'll get yeah. to some of the numbers underlying of what the start <laughs> has or has not been for for Pittsburgh. Um, let's go with you. You were a busy boy this weekend, huh? You had four matches? I did. I, I was all over the place. Willingly? And all of them... Four matches all had four goals in them. I deserve better than this. <laughs> uh, Louisville 3-1. That was the 4 o'clock game on Saturday. 7.30, Charleston 4, New Mexico nothing. Orange County started at 10 against Miami. That finished 2-2. Monterey 2 and Rhode Island 2 Sunday at 6 Eastern time. You know... It, I sort of went into this weekend going, what a luxury. I get to see a third of the league. And 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 I can speak to this in a sec, but in like 30 hours. Devin yeah. and I watch a lot of tape. Calling a game or being in a game is very so different. different. So different. Very, you can only be so involved if you aren't talking to the coaches, if you aren't fully ingrained within the ebb and flow of a game. Like, there's a certain level of – mental intensity you put into watching a game live as as opposed to watching it on tape and and trying to see what's already happened i just had this conversation with casey by the way i gotta cut you off casey's my wife hard to believe i married everyone um she was talking to me and she was like you you have to do you seem so much busier right now than normal and i was like yeah well it's I'm not calling any USL games right now because it's just the national schedule for me because of the congested um, personal schedule that I have as well as games, right? And so it takes that much more to chase these games down, to find the notes, to watch the interviews, to actually watch the matches themselves. And oh, by the way, the one thing that you didn't mention, which I think is the most important, I'm basically doing it for free. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not obviously with our contract yeah. in the league and they take great care of us and I'm I'm blessed. Absolutely. But you're getting paid to call those games. I'm not getting paid to watch them. I'm getting paid. Um, you're doing this for free. Yeah. Uh, Dev, a uh, couple of thoughts that rolled through my head as we went. Um, wow. Did Pittsburgh look horrible? Worse than I've ever seen them. You want to know what helps when you're trying to string two passes together? Completing the first. I was just going to say that. Yeah, they weren't doing this at all. 35 minutes of just a, an avalanche of Louisville pressure. And they got absolutely nothing out of it. And I said it during the game. You're like, Danny must be sitting there, the, the Louisville coach, going, I cannot believe we owned this game this long and it's still and, nil nil. Yeah. Dude, uh, Wilson Harris had five shots in the opening eight minutes. You're right. <laughs> five and, shots and in eight minutes. Didn't I'll hit the outside of a barn, but still. No, no. <laughs> but it, it, I, when's the, it, it's happened. But if Bob Lilly's coached 400 games in this league or whatever it is, even the predecessors to this league, how many times do you think he made a sub 30 minutes in? Without an injury, not many. It, yeah. Two hands. Yeah. I mean, not so, I think you might be you're being kind generous. Here, I think. Yeah. Very generous. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was a Danny Rivera problem per se, but I thought this was really interesting. About 23, 24 minutes into the game, there was an action down the left hand side. Um the rotation brought the left side midfielder back and then allowed the left back to sprint down down the line, if if I'm remembering this right. Yes. And Danny Rivera just stopped. Yep. And Ricky Lopez Espin, who was working with me on that game, just goes, Danny Rivera is currently confused. Dude. He does not know where to go. Bro. So go big picture here for a second. 
I need, need an in-depth explanation as to why so many players are having to play out of position. I do not agree. Let's start. Let's start with, let's start with Danny Griffin. Center back. Danny Griffin is a serviceable when necessary replacement piece on the back line. He is not a starting center back, nor should he be against the Louisville city. Junior Etu should not be playing outside back or wing back. Danny Rivera can get away with it. Absolutely. And that's, you can, he's one of those kind of anywhere army knife pieces. You can play him anywhere. Exactly. But because Ilal Osumanu didn't understand the movements by Wilson Harris and Ray Serrano, because um, Jake Morris was so active, Mm -hmm. because the midfield, which to me, this is probably the biggest conversation out of all of it. How Davila and, and Winder were able to be on the ball and control so much against that three-man midfield, which at times there were more because of the way that Griffin was coming off the back line. How they were able to control so much, but didn't do anything unnecessary. So much of that was touch, go, touch, go. Just moving the process forward, right? Hitting that 30-yard ball when necessary, but it was primarily coming off the back line, finding your pivot pieces, and then quickly moving. These guys weren't beating massive uh, one-on-ones. They didn't have to go and stretch the game unnecessarily. They were so clean in the midfield. So I don't understand watching the structure of Pittsburgh overall. I'm going to say this as nice as I can. What the hell they were doing. I'm not concerned for Bob Lilly and the process overall. I am concerned what that is. And to your point, and then I'll step out of the way here and you can get in. We'll talk about the numbers later. Mm Mm-hmm. Everybody just looks like they had no idea what the game plan was or what they were supposed to do. And I've never seen that from a Pittsburgh team. I've seen a Pittsburgh team come out flat and then change and get comfortable. I've seen a team come out and the game plan not going their way. They knew what it was, but it wasn't going their way. And they adjusted. None of that happened in this game. Shame on Louisville, by the way. They didn't win the game 8-0. But that's another conversation as well. They were confused. They were unorganized. There was lack of effort, and and from the get go, it is the worst I have ever seen them look. Yeah, I actually I, felt bad for them. I did as well. Um, this is a Pittsburgh team that's probably the best opposition for Louisville historically in the regular season since at least since Lynn Family Stadium opened. Playoffs mean, are a different you mean, deal. You mean Louisville had the better of the matchup? No, it go, if you go look at the numbers, right. You'd think because of all the playoff wins that Louisville's had the better of this. If you look at the regular season, remember when they opened the stadium? No, no, no. lost to Pittsburgh? No, I'm with you. I'm saying you you mean mean the matchup on the weekend favored Louisville for the first time in a while. Yes. Yeah, within the regular season. I'm with you on that. Absolutely. Pittsburgh Um, has owned them. Right. And so, you know, I I think there's an element of Danny being – well aware they played each other in preseason and what Pittsburgh did the following two weeks, they pressed. I mean, the the pressure was non-existent from Pittsburgh in this game. The rotation had Louisville completely out of sorts. Um, Again, guys just were literally frozen trying to compute and every stoppage that existed, they'd pan over to Bob Lilly and he'd be sitting there with his arm around Junior Etu trying to explain this. And I'm, I don't mean to say only Junior. I'm just saying someone. But that was the one that, that most stood out to me. Um, yeah, Pittsburgh. I, I'll also say this, and, and we've got a, got a break here in a minute. There's a Louisville fan, and bless your heart, you, Bob Lilly's not going anywhere. This dude lost a key starter on every line. Player of the year, defender of the year, goalkeeper of the year candidate. You could argue the most important piece at every single level, except for Ibarra, but yes. Yes, but even Ibarra and Dos Santos So important. So important. You lost five in-pen starters. So, yeah, you kept Mertz, you kept Griffin, you kept Forbes, and fine, but on the whole, you lost your two best strikers. You lost two of your four best midfielders. 
You lost your best defender and your goalkeeper. It's going to take a minute. But they could finish with five wins this year and 20 points, and they won't. But they could. Bob ain't going nowhere. No one has made more with less in this Did league. Did someone than say that, that they were going to fire him? No, just asking, hey, look at their upcoming schedule. And it is. It's brutal. If they go get whapped a couple weeks in a row, like, does the seat get warm? No. Pittsburgh is not like Hartford. It's not like no Phoenix, where, like, you lose four or five games, everyone goes, Time for a change. The reason this place exists is because of Bob Lilly, is because of him taking an organization that, although historically has been around, there was no relevance, there was no competition, there was no quality coming up through the academy ranks, there was no offseason acquisitions where everybody looked and went, wow, they're going to be good. They were just there. Yeah. They were vanilla. They didn't do anything. And then Bob came in and said, we're going to play my way. We're going to get it done. We're going to challenge ourselves. We're going to ingrain ourselves into this community to where now it's the stadium. It's the team. It's the ownership group. It's the damn training facility. That yeah. would be one of the most asinine things I've ever heard. If someone actually thought that he was going to depart because of a rough start to a season. Yeah. And it, look, Dave Brandt going to catch a stray here. Sorry, bro. It, it's not a you problem. Believe it or not. Uh, that was, I believe, the last coach before Bob came in. Correct. Please, please. That the where they were then, where they are now. I they could lose in the first round of the playoffs for the next five years, and I wouldn't be done with Bob. It's, Only one team can win. It's eating at St. Elmo's or eating at McDonald's, and both are fine, and you can get results out of both. But we both know that St. Elmo's is the only place to go. Oh boy, let's go to break. Oh, I don't know. Boy. I I did a goofy impression in one of the games this weekend, and the look I got. <laughs> people don't realize we get a box next to us. I know we got to go to break. There's a box next to us. It's got cough and talk back to our to our producer and an off button. And you know, if you make the person next to you laugh, they may lean forward and smack that cough button. But if you get someone to turn off their mic, you hit it. You, you really made me, got You it. made me leave the room twice last week. Just I, so did. You know. and we'll, I did. We'll talk about that. We got to talk about that. Yep. Uh, we're going to go to break. Um, but, you know, just know we're having way more fun than you think. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment on All Access. <laughs> Let's get back to USL All Access on Sirius XM FC with Mike Watts and Devin Kerr. Welcome back to USL All Access. That was a heck of a first segment. <laughs> All right, Dev, let's uh, get after it. Uh, Mitchell Tainer gets to 100. You know, I, I had a chance. I didn't. Do you ever text someone on their birthday and not realize it's their birthday? I was texting oh, yeah. with them over the weekend. And I didn't even wish them a happy 100th. I feel so terrible. I, I'm really, really bad with numbers so uh, and dates and stuff. So I always take those and put them in my calendar. I set a reminder two weeks out a week out, two days before, a day before, and the day of. That's how bad I am. But just so that I can remember. I did, however, text Mitz, by the way. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I was texting him saying, you know, there's this team that I think could really use a guy just like you. And he responded with a wink emoji and said, every team could use a guy like me. No. I know. So my guy. humble, Mitchie. I, I'm, uh, it, uh, is he one of a kind in this league right now? Is there a guy like him? Mm, like he, no, he changes your profile. Yeah. Like he changes your whole mentality. And I know that's, uh, I know I'm playing right into the motif of mentality monster. I get it. That dude genuinely is a monster. You know what I, I think isn't fair for Mitch Tainer that I, I want everybody to know. And if you're a footballer or you're a coach and you've watched him enough, you understand it. But though things are changing this year in San Antonio, the idea of 100 miles an hour, we don't need the ball, you know, minimal amount of touches, high efficiency, physical football that San Antonio has put out the past couple of years, basically 20 to 23. It's removed the ability to actually be tactful with the ball and play when some of it is so direct. He's really good with the ball of his feet. Mm -hmm. Like very, very good with both feet, you know, and he is 
I had the, I'll never forget, I had this discussion with him last year coming into the 23 season. And we talked about, you know, what it was like for him and growth patterns and stuff. And one of the things that I wanted gets outside of that kind of mantra of San Antonio. It's the reception, holding possession, breaking that first line of pressure, driving of balls into space. Primarily, it's him going and winning a 50-50. Or the first ball is an immediate ball back into negative space against the opposition. So, like, he doesn't really have the ability to bring it down and play. And if you watch him this year, though they didn't get it to do a lot last year, and I'm not taking credit for it, it's all Mitch, he's he's impressive on the ball, man. He has always been impressive on the ball, but the amount that they're asking them to play, this isn't something that happened overnight. People need to give him credit. Yep. Uh, congrats 100, Mitch. Uh, hopefully uh, another 100 more. Uh, Philip Goodrum did get another goal. Uh, scored against Tulsa, uh, rather for Tulsa in the opener, was acquired obviously last year from Memphis. Um, did nothing in Memphis at all. Clearly uh, not gruntled. Uh, he was he was disgruntled. Uh, Tulsa started to pick it up by the time we were Fall done. Love. <laughs> Fall in love How with my you, diction, you, Devin. You get you getting there on your own, like fumbling, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, Chris Berman style was impressive. Yep, fully, fully disgruntled. Uh, Dev, anything to add on uh, on uh, Bill? Well, if, okay, four in a row, regular season. That's obviously dating back to last year. The record, by the way, if people don't know, is eight. Uh, Haji Berry said it in 2018, eight consecutive games with a goal with the Swope Park Rangers. He actually almost, almost broke it in 2021 with seven. He was then with Colorado Springs. So I wanted to look and see as to whether or not uh, Phil Goodrum could break the record. He can't. No, he cannot. He's at Orange County, home against Phoenix, at SAC, home against the Battery. Not only will he not go four games in a row, he might not get a goal in any of those four. <laughs> no, no, and that's not a knock on him. It's just no, no. like – It's just – Yeah. That's, that's the gauntlet you're about to walk right now, my friend. Yep. Uh, if you get anything out of that, uh, good chance he'll come with three points, but that that's a rough one. Uh, you and I were chatting about Wilson Harris in the lead up to this. He, he scored again this week, could have scored five. It, it sure as heck felt like it. Uh, his 51st six. goal now six, go for it. So <laughs> yeah, 51st. So we were talking about it youngest of 50 and there was an interesting stat that came out by Nicholas Murray, our guru in the front office at USL championship. And it was the best strike rate among players who have scored 50 goals in the regular season in the USL championship. Youngest to 50, Wilson Harris. Fastest to 50 up until last year was actually our good friend Chandler Hoffman. Um, Chandler Hoffman uh, did it in 100 appearances. Cal Jennings did it in 90. So I was looking at the, the, the best strike rate around 50 goal scores in the top 10. In order, Cameron Lancaster, Cal Jennings, Romario Williams, Dane Kelly, Chandler Hoffman, Haji Berry, Wilson Harris, Jose Angulo, blast from the past, Junior Flemings, and Nico Brett. So my question to you, Mike, would be is, if you kind of ran through those 10 names, do you think that Wilson is ranked appropriately? Wilson is seventh on that list, uh, just with the, the people around him. And if you don't want to answer that, because we can just go in and analytically and say yes, I would be curious if you could draft your top five, who you would take. Yeah. Or better yet, they're, stri they're strikers. You get three. We'll are, three. Are, yeah. Are these guys that you're, that you want on your team during the week, or is this just a guy you want to come poach goals for you? Cause there's no, no. A big no, no, they're on your team in the week. They're in the dressing room. This isn't just about numbers. I just asked one guy out. Uh, <laughs> I know who that is. Uh huh. <laughs> um, Cal Jennings is definitely in there for me. Yeah. Um, Wilson, it's just like Wilson scores within the 18, which on a team like Louisville is extremely valuable. That's the guy you need. You yeah. don't need that on every team, but you definitely need it there. So, like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say Wilson probably is on the money or maybe a couple below where I'd pick him. Okay. Um, Come back to me in the last segment on the third. Got it. I'm taking Cal Jennings as well, in case you were mm -hmm. wondering. Um, Nico? I'm not taking Nico Brett. I'm not. Um, I am 
I am and will always be because of his play and because of what he's like in the locker room, a Junior Flemings fan. Mm. I'm probably going to catch a little heat on that because of what went on on the field of play in Phoenix against San Diego. Fully understand that. Um, If I could remove that situation, he'd probably be my number one choice. Mm. But people make mistakes. And I'm not vouching for him and what went on. People make mistakes. Uh, People have to learn to grow as individuals. There's still a lot of hearsay in that situation about what went back and forth. Uh, But I do think he is one of the best strikers this league has ever seen. Uh, Interesting to note that Solomon Asante is not on that list, by the way. Basically, the past two and a year, two and a half years, ruptured his numbers. Yeah. I'm going to pick my third in the third segment as well, good sir. I can posture with the best of them. Let's do that. Uh, Dev, before we go to break, quick comment. Uh, Cristiano Francois, I, I love this. You, you put it in here. My, my guy went back to school. Yeah, this was – I'm I'm just so impressed by people that have this type of dedication, Mike. So Cristiano Francois, a massive recruit on the Eastern Seaboard in the you know 2010-2011 region, he ends up going to Maryland. Maryland Terrapins, perennial powerhouse in college soccer, national titles. Sasha Sarovsky, one of the best colleges in all of college soccer for a variety of reasons. He actually only played his freshman year. A lot of people don't know that. He ran into some academic issues in his sophomore season that basically made him ineligible to play. He leaves school. He's on this professional route. And he goes back to Southern New Hampshire University to get his degree. That is the most important thing that we're going to talk about right here. And just tip of the cap, because as someone who lived a similar path, went to school, didn't like it, things didn't work out for me, chased the professional dream. I'm 40 years of age, and I haven't gone back. It's something that I want to do. I just haven't done yet, and I promised my family, my wife, that I will eventually do it. Um, look, another little trivia for you, Mike. Maryland that year lost in the College Cup semifinal. It was a 4-4 game in regulation. Cristiano Francois actually scored in that match. They lost 4-3 in PKs to Georgetown. Now, Georgetown would go on to the final, they would lose to a guy by the name of Todd Yagley, who was the head coach of Indiana. It was his first year as the at the helm. He's been chasing a couple ever since. It was their eighth national title. Georgetown beat Maryland in the semis, lost to Indiana in the final. What former Golden Glove winning goalkeeper was in goal for Georgetown in those two matches? Did Gomez play it? Oh, my sense. man! Yeah. Yes, yes, Tomas Gomez. Yeah. Very well done, Michael. By the way, uh, I, I didn't want to give it away. Back-to-back Golden Glove winning. Indeed. Yeah, yeah very that impressive. Giving it away. Uh, all right, uh, when we come back, to have a, you know, the, the under-17 rule that maybe we didn't know about. It's possible it slipped right under the radar, but now we're fully aware and we want to comment on it. That's all coming up here on the other side of the break. Giving insight to all the biggest moments in championship and League One. This is USL All Access on Sirius XM FC with Mike Watts and Devin Kerr. Welcome back to All Access, everybody. Happy Tuesday. If you miss any part of this show, you're able to rewatch it on the USL YouTube channel. Devin and I, we are shocked by our ratings over on the USL YouTube page. I mean, people would really rather just watch eight minutes of uninterrupted highlights, but apparently we're not far behind. Mike, is there anything that's more cringing to you than the sound of your own voice? And I don't mean that as you. I mean, no. as like, I, I don't like listening to myself either. Well, let me turn the lights out before I do that. I, I don't want to be seen when, I, when I'm listening to my own stuff. <laughs> you you in your basement with the lights out? <laughs> I've got a producer, and you and I have both worked with him. I love this guy to death. Tall glass of red wine. Goes home from every game and rewatches it with the lights out. Good for you. Uh, that person is not me again. It's important to say it's not me, but this isn't, you know, like boxed wine. It's good wine. Which is the, the best way in this industry to get better is to have people listen to you and for you to listen to yourself. It's also the hardest thing to do. Accurate. Accurate. Uh, Dev, uh, you know, I noticed this in a Louisville press release. I had not become familiar. I was unfamiliar with their game. Okay. Uh, Louisville signed a under-17 player to their roster um, on an academy deal, right? Not fully pro. So often when you see these guys, they may pop up on the bench once in a blue moon. 
Um, but the reality is you usually aren't bringing them into play. Usually if, if you're that far along, you've got a guy signed to a pro deal. Allows you to keep your NCAA college eligibility. Uh, it's become a really common thing around the championship. There is a new rule in the league instituted this year. A lot of leagues, when COVID happened and they went to five subs, it became a nine-player bench, a 20-player game day roster. Not the championship. It stayed at 18. You are now allowed to dress two additional players if you are at home, if those players are 17 or younger. I love this idea. And I was hashing it out a little bit during the, the Louisville game. Even if they don't touch the field, being a professional footballer doesn't mean you need to be in the game to to be immersed in it. And so for some of these guys that just get to be around players, watch the tactical adjustments, it's all the stuff that you don't see enough of in the college game or in the academy game. Um, I, I absolutely love it. And if, if you end up being up five goals and you make your debut, that's awesome. But it's it's house money now for the clubs. You aren't paying extra to put a guy up in a hotel. It's I don't think it's that big a competitive disadvantage for the road team where you don't see the value of, of doing it. Gives you a leg up. I like it. All right. So let's start with the experience because this is something that dating back to my experience in college, they would bring players that were fringe players for squad selection, we'll say it that way, they would bring us on the road and to experience the environment. So you're you're spot on. Just because you're not on the field of play doesn't mean that you're not getting the actual involvement and necessary materials, because that's what they are, to help yourself succeed moving forward. Walking into the stadium, prep for game day, meals, the atmosphere, the emotion, all of that, whether you step on the field of play or not, is going to be there. Now, it's going to go up a notch for sure, Mike, if you then get into a competitive environment. I do wonder, to your point, about the competitive advantage. Because that example that I just gave you with college, the other team was obviously allowed to dress a specific amount of players as well, and it was mm -hmm. even. Why can't we say, oh... We'll use Louisville and Pittsburgh as an example on the weekend. Pittsburgh's got an up-and-coming academy. I don't really think that we have to talk about how good Lou City's academy is um, because they're that great. But why can't Pittsburgh bring two as well? If they're willing to invest the funds in their, in their process of paying for the extra hotel room for two guys, because that's what it is. It's one more hotel room, of two plane tickets, two bus seats. The bus seats are much easier to come by the plane tickets aren't going to be great they're going to be more expensive but it's we're not talking basically we're not talking about a ton of money in the grand scheme of things because i can guarantee you the two meals are already going to be there the spot in the locker room is already going to be there the equipment is already going to be there so to me i actually do find it fair to open it up for both teams i get the cost argument but we're not talking about a massive amount of money it's a couple shekels in a bucket at the end of the day isn't it yeah i I actually made note of this because I wonder if it's related. I, I honestly, I don't know. Uh, there was a, a funny story that came out of MLS. I actually got some international play. Did you read about Julian Hall? Yeah, I was watching yeah. it happen live. Tom Bogart yeah. was live tweeting it. <laughs> yeah. So Julian Hall finally got to debut against Inter Miami. Now, Messi wasn't there. Red Bull blew him out. Um, but the game started in the middle of the afternoon. If you're familiar with the MLS on Apple deal, one of the big things is most of the games start at a specific time in your time zone. That time is late enough. And I'm not talking midnight. I'm talking seven, seven 30 Eastern time. Right. Um, that is too late for a person under the age of 16 to work in the state of New Jersey. And Julian Hall was only 15 until Sunday. So my dude couldn't even sit on the bench as a professional athlete because it was too, it was after his bedtime. That's wild. It's interesting <laughs> because, how it varies from state to state. Meanwhile, 16 year, 15 year old Devin Kerr is getting thrown out of the car on the way home from training at nine 15 at night 
because I had to run home because I needed more fitness. As if the pre three previous training sessions earlier in the day weren't enough, mom, the yeah. four mile run home will be just fine to make sure that you can complete your professional dream. Yeah, I'm wondering it, with that in mind, I don't know how the labor laws work into it. I don't know how um, if you have to leave on Thursday, think about going on uh, for a match on Saturday. You could miss three days of school out of that. And I, if you want to be a pro footballer, fine. But if you're on an academy deal, you aren't there yet, dude. You still need to go get go get your high school done. And then so I also wonder if that's part of it. Well, I would also say to you that we talked about the investment into into your club overall. One of the greatest things that came out of COVID was the fact that ownership groups groups found a way to go and get more money for travel. So previously, and I know we're referencing MLS now, but this is going to exist for USL teams as well. Previously, you were only allowed to have three, one, two, three. Oh, thank you very much. One, two, three. Three charter flights a year is all you were allowed to have in a domestic season. Now you can charter as much as you want. So I'm with you. They need to go to school. But I'm almost positive that he could go five days a week and my boy's getting on a six o'clock flight to charter directly to market wherever they're going. Uh, yeah, in MLS, uh, who's chartering in USL? No, I'm saying event. I'm saying eventually, I, I, eventually, eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teams have chartered before, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm just saying it's a gradual progression. Yeah. I, I like that very, we've made this very progression gradual, quite very gradual. gradual. Uh, all right. Uh, when we come back, uh, Devin and I will absolutely trash each other in the last segment because it's kind of what we do. It, it's gradual. And then it's next on All Access. You're listening to USL All Access on Sirius XM FC. Here are your hosts, Mike Watts and Devin Kerr. Welcome back to USL All Access uh, with Devin and his magnificent set of choppers. Uh, Mike Watts and Emmett McConnell always putting it together. Our guy and the folks at USL putting it together. Appreciation of them as well. All right, Dev, uh, before we get into a handful of maybe game of the week and, and mailbag, uh, let's just remind you the CBS Sports Golazo Network games this week, there's actually three of them, including the first game from League One to air on that network. It's free on the CBS Sports app. You can get it on your phone, uh, Pluto TV, number of other ways. It'll also air on local TV uh, in certain markets, certainly in Sacramento uh, and Detroit. Uh, Friday night, Lexington take on Greenville Triumph. That's the first League One game on Golazo. Saturday, it's a doubleheader, 7 o'clock. Indy 11 and Detroit City. Then in the late window, Sacramento host Memphis 901 FC. You can catch it all on the CBS Sports app. Every other game this week is available on ESPN+. And, Dev, you and I are just am I 12, 11, 11 days away from USL on CBS. Louisville and Indy 11. Uh, that is April 6th, the Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Even if you don't want to watch, turn your TV on, go outside, walk the dog. I don't care. Um, yeah. You and I got to see a bunch of production elements. Uh, for, for In layman's terms, new score bug graphic on your screen during games. Um, some of the interstitials will look different. New open. It's going to look really, really slick. And new music. We haven't had that in like four or five years. I'm pretty excited. By the way, I, I got to get on a soapbox here for a second. Do me a favor, please. All the patrons at home um, understand that we don't control every game we don't control their graphics or their mistakes <laughs> so i noticed some comments behind the scenes which i get about some local feeds and things weren't going well you're right criticize that ain't us no innocent. i want you to know right away okay so the whole comments about oh looks like they're ready for big cbs that is not us nor will any of that production have any part of our show. That's not me bad-mouthing that show. That's to say, get excited. Get yeah. ready. Because we've told you the entire time things are going to look different. It's going to be different. We can't wait to show off all the bells and whistles that everybody has worked so hard to prepare for you. And, Dev, I think you and I should go take a, a long, extended experience at the longest outdoor bar in all of Kentucky. Oh, 52 feet of glory at the Modelo Bar at Lynn Family Stadium. Yeah, can't wait. Is it possible to get thrown out of Lynn Family Stadium only to be thrown into the mini pitch behind? Just an <laughs> honest question. Honest question. 
I, I you might I I would actually just go home if it's outside the friendly confines of the stadium, which it is. I'm not trespassing. Joke's Dev, on you, Danny Cruz. Dev, if I got thrown out of that stadium, I would go get the best cornbread in all of, of Louisville. Where would we go? Oh, Whiskey Kitchen, man. That's it. Whiskey Kitchen. You have not tasted cornbread like this in the entirety of your life. Every time I go there, I get that just for that. By the way, being the bourbon lover and aficionado that I am, it's a great bourbon bar, but I'm not concerning myself with that. I'm there for the culinary delights. You can get bourbon anywhere. You can't get that skill of goodness anywhere. No. no. Or anywhere else. No. All right, That's Dev. What they uh, say about you when someone goes on air with you. you oh, yeah. Best skill that you've ever had. Dev, uh, best game this week. I put a couple ideas for me. Indy Detroit Saturday night. Tampa Bay, Rhode Island. Sacramento, Memphis. Uh, Phoenix, New Mexico could have some juice to it, given it's, it's sort of historic nature and yet so few guys remain from when that was most heated that I don't know that that still withstood the test of time um give me Tampa Bay Rhode Island in terms of a game I really want to see this week interesting I'm still not convinced on Tampa Bay I I in terms of what they are I know they're going to be good and Rhode Island I enjoyed watching them play in Monterey and I will enjoy them much more not playing on that sticky ass surface can I pick two? Yeah. I'll give ha- instead of full effort on one, half hearted on two. Okay. Indy Detroit. I like the start for Detroit. They're now on the road. That's a tough place to play. Indy has been good, not great. And I expect greatness out of them. I do. We- we've talked about the-, the roster for quite some time. I expect them to be good. They need momentum going into the following week's fixture against Louisville Indianapolis Proximity Association football contest. Good job. And then Phoenix and New Mexico is just I, – I don't care if at the if they were in different conferences on different planets and different universes, I would still watch it. Um, there, There is an emotion tied to that match that even if every single player that has ever played in one of those before has been removed, it's going to be a slaughter. And I think the starts to both of their seasons are interesting as well, which is why I'm so intrigued. The, the, the intensity that you're getting out of the game, can you harness that emotion – for the betterment of your play, it's going to be a difficult one for both of them. Mm. Dev, uh, let's hit our favorite segment. Mailbag. I like it. That's one of your better ones. So, interestingly enough, I waited because this was sent to me late last week, and I had a couple other questions come out as well. Someone reached out and wanted to know what the roster restrictions are in terms of loans between leagues specifically they asked for usl and mls i went a little bit deeper mike for us and i wanted to make sure because things have changed over the years i wanted to make sure we got everything in its entirety from a usl standpoint sure i know for a fact mls has the ability to open up and there is basically unlimited loans um there are laws if you will put in place but for all intents and purposes it's unlimited loans That was not the case just two years ago because coming out of COVID, it got a little bit unfriendly. And the loan structures were specific terms, three games, five games. So the question was, what are the loan requirements for teams? Can a player from MLS be loaned to the same USL team multiple times in the same season? So if you got loaned from DC to Loudoun, although that affiliation has changed, and then got recalled, could you go back? Could you be loaned by D.C. to Loudoun, go back, and then be loaned from D.C. to Philadelphia Union or from D.C. to Miami FC? The answer, Mike, is 100%. It's open. So we are back to the the world of kind of whatever you need at any point in time, whether it be academy or full professional, you have the ability to reach your arms out and kind of grab those necessities. Do you have any uh, other things out of the mailbag? Uh, I actually had someone ask, um, I know they hit us up on Twitter, but someone wanted to know if we would make ourselves available to the public once we arrived in Louisville. We had a nice little exchange back and forth about game day operation, but they wanted to know what our running order would be. I said I had to get back to them because I don't know your fi- your official schedule yet. I arrived Thursday evening, but it's going to be late 
So I'm unavailable. Friday, I'll be at trainings in the morning. I imagine there's going to be some interviews and things of that nature. Watts, where are you at in that conversation? My wife's birthday is Friday the 5th. Never heard of her. Yep. So I will be waking up like a good husband should and giving her her gift and, uh, you know, making breakfast and then coming to Louisville. So, yeah. What does Mike Watts Thursday. cook at breakfast for his wife? I think I'm going to make pancakes. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Infuse the syrup fruit. with some fruit. Yeah. Learn anything? I learned that you actually can cook. I've never had you make me a meal, by the way. I can make pancakes. It, it You know the funny part? It, it's just add water and put it on a skillet. 20 uh, bucks. We'll change our hotel room. Let's get an extended stay, and let's test that theory. Yep, and I learned, uh, well, it, you know, because of the technical snafu, I already forgot what I learned. What a week. Uh, for Dev <laughs> and Emmett, Mike, thanks, thanks for watching, listening. Talk to you again next Tuesday. And we're in Louisville in 11 days. It's going to be lit. So long for now, everybody. Bye-bye. This is USL All Access. If you missed any portion of the program, listen back anytime on the SXM app.